Hey, what's up guys, John here. We're in the biggest real estate housing bubble in US history. I'm gonna lay out the facts, I'm gonna lay out where this is going, lay out what this bubble is gonna look like when it pops, because I think it's gonna pop probably in the next few months, it's slowly deflating right now. And I think it's gonna be horrible. I think it's actually gonna be really, really bad. And there's gonna be opportunity for real estate investors and people to get into the market, but people have to understand what's actually happening right now as a society. The last two years, you know, we were in quantitative easing where they were just printing and printing, printing so much money. Interest rates are at zero, basically. You, know, you get a 30 year fixed rate at two and a half percent. The money was basically free. Everyone was relocating from expensive cities like LA and New York, all these expensive markets and going to suburbs, buying huge houses. And so there was massive demand for beautiful homes homes and you had these low interest rates supporting it and everyone was very very excited about the work from home experience so people were just buying 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 and house flippers house flippers making a fortune it was amazing it was an amazing opportunity for them but now we're seeing the world changing and it's changing very very rapidly you know we're looking at the actual data like look at this case shiller uh national home price index current levels of 10.4 percent above the march 2006 peak and 70.5% above February 2012. Now, a lot of people say, John, you gotta take into consideration 40% of all US dollars are printed in the last two years. You know, that's a lot, especially over 250 years since 1776, the founding of this country. You had 40% of all currencies printed over just the last two years. So people would say, hey, you know, real estate is an amazing investment. You gotta get into real estate because you don't wanna be sitting in, you know, dollars because they're, you know, losing value every single day. And I would agree with that. Real estate is an amazing investment. I love real estate, but I'm also aware of risk and reward. And the risk of being a house flipper right now in relation to the reward is just not worth it. And I think we're gonna see these house flippers get absolutely crushed. So here's what's happening. Right now, the mortgage payment to income ratio in 2006, it was about 30, looks like about 33, 34%. Now it's about 31% debt to income ratio. So historically speaking, US homeowners are in a fairly strong financial position, but they aren't who economists are worried about. Instead, they're concerned about the next crop of home buyers. Back in December, the typical American household would have to spend 24% of its monthly income to make mortgage payments on the average price US home, according to Black Knight, a mortgage technology and data provider. At the latest reading this month, Black Knight mortgage payment to income ratio is 31% the highest reading since September of 2007, right? So you have higher debt to income ratio. This does not take into consideration what's also happening right now is new home construction may be up, but supply chain issues will continue to create drag on the housing market. So the, the house flippers right now have a couple of very small problems. The one is gonna be rising interest rates. Interest rates are gonna to continue to rise, meaning that home buyers that were looking at that three to four to $500,000 house flip in the suburbs, now they talk to the mortgage broker and they can, they can they can't qualify for it. You know, they have to downgrade their expectations. So a lot of buyers are like, hey, you know what? Can't get the house, can't get the dream house I want. It's not worth spending all this extra money to get into a house that I really am just not that excited about. I'm gonna sit on the sidelines. So you have more buyers sitting on the sidelines. And now you have house flippers sitting, carrying more debt because they can't finish their properties, a lot of them, because of supply chain problems. So you have, you have less buyers, you have supply chain problems, and then now what we're likely gonna see is gonna be this inflation issue coupled with a contracting US economy, which is gonna put more people in a cautious position. Before, people are very optimistic. People are getting rich in stocks, they're getting rich in crypto, rich in real estate, everyone's getting rich, but now people are losing money. And when they lose money, they get into a defensive place. And so we just take a look at the average American. It's pretty fascinating here to pay attention to where the actual real Americans are. Not just, you know, where the rich Americans are, where the average American stands, because the average American makes up America. So you have $2,712 is the average wage, according to advisorperspective.com. And that sounds about right, right? And so you have 2712 by 40 hours a week, which is $1,084 per week, right? $43,392 in gross annual income. This is gross, not, not factoring in any taxes. Now, you take this as $3,616 per month. They say inflation is costing about $276 a month. I think that's very, very low end. You know, I go to a restaurant, it might cost me another 10 bucks or 12 bucks. Go fill up the gas tank, it might cost me another 15 bucks, right? All these things add up. To me, it feels like I'm paying an extra 50 bucks a day or an extra, you know, between 30 and 60 bucks a day on low end if I'm just, you know, um, if I'm just kind of, uh, you know, playing it safe. I'm not, you know, doing heavy spending or level, just conservatively. It's expensive. Like I would think real inflation is probably costing the average American about double that, probably 500 bucks. But let's just go with 276. That would mean that they're left with $3,340 per month in gross income, average American. And you have the average American paying $488 per month in a used car, 
which comes out to 2852 in gross income. Then you factor in their rent, which they say is 1463, and their average credit card balance is $110 per month, right? And their average student loans. You start factoring all this stuff in, you, you come out to a total number at the end of $886. This is not factoring any taxes. This is not factoring in uh, car insurance, not factoring in a cell phone bill, not factoring in even feeding themselves, right? This, so the average American is basically broke. You, got a mil you have $1 trillion in outstanding credit card debt. You have about $1.7 trillion in outstanding student loans. You have $1.46 trillion in outstanding auto loans. You have all these things coming to a head. We're leaving an economy in which everyone is very optimistic. And then what we're looking at now is like you look at these headlines. These headlines, and I just opened this. Coincidentally, all these headlines are right here. You look at these headlines, people are more scared. They're less optimistic about us leaving You know that you know, two-week problem in two years ago in, in March of 2020. They're, they realize that we're probably going to continue stepping into darker times. And so when people are thinking, okay, it's costing more to borrow money, we're stepping into uncertain times, world's getting more expensive, I'm not sure how secure this job is, do I need to go buy a brand new house? Do I need to go buy a beautiful property? A lot of people probably say no. Probably makes more sense to get into the neighborhood I want, but maybe get the house and paint it myself, do the work myself, do it over time. That's what we're stepping into. We're not stepping into, hey, I'm gonna go overpay for this property right now because life is great. People are getting concerned. And what I think is gonna be unique about this recovery here is when we look at what this recovery is gonna look like in relation to former recoveries. Look at the uh, 1980s stock crash. Look in the early 2000s, the stock, or the uh, dot-com bubble. Look at 2007, real estate crash, as it all was occurring. What generally happened? People were overly optimistic. They were heavily strapped with debt, and they thought that everything was only gonna go up. That's what everyone thought, right? What are we in right now? We're in all those things. Everyone is extremely optimistic, or they were. They're strapped with debt, and you know, and problems are going to happen. But in former former crashes, people rebuilt their themselves. You know, they went through four or five years where maybe they lost it all, or they got really pulled back. But over time, they they gradually moved themselves up out of the trenches and rebuilt it. But now we're in a different America. We're in an America that's a very entitled society where people expect to be taken care of. And people don't want to work as hard as they you know, once did. And so you take all this into consideration. People are expecting $40 an hour. You know, if inflation continues soaring, they look at their boss and say, hey, this is your problem. Pay me. Right. And so what are bosses going to say? They're going to say, hey, well, if I'm only getting $30 of value from your work, I'm not going to pay you $35. I'm not even going to pay you $30 because I need to make money for managing you, for hiring you, for dealing with you. If I'm not getting paid for dealing with you, I'm not going to do it. That's what bosses are gonna start saying across the country. They're already saying it in a, in a pretty small way. That's why you're seeing more outsourcing. But what's gonna happen here is gonna be robotics and AI. So we're stepping into an environment where there's gonna be less jobs available in the future, not more. And so if there's less jobs available in the future, then that means that we're stepping into not just a traditional recession, we're stepping into a place of uh, despair. Now take a look at this. It says, and it, it's very fascinating. Other industries made up a, of Slack, made up the Slack, including food and consumer goods manufacturer, where robot demand dropped nine, jumped 92% last year. The long delayed robot invasion of Canada is evident in what the companies are telling analysts about their automation plans. The drive to automate is obviously far from a trend limited to this country, according to the analysts of earnings call transcripts using the financial intelligence platform Sentio. The number of calls where automation and labor shortages have been mentioned has spiked worldwide. In Canada, recent quarters have seen more than a dozen calls where those topics came up compared with the average of three per quarter prior to 2021. So what we're likely gonna see is we're gonna see robotics, we're gonna see tech, we're gonna see all this a part of our recovery. We have the average American, think about, really think about this. The average American reads at a seventh, eighth grade level, lazy, they don't, some of them don't show up to work. You know, this isn't like uh, our grandparents' generation. You know, like our, for example, my grandmother and grandfather, my grandmother worked at a box factory. My grandfather worked at a glass factory in New Jersey. They lived in a very, very small house. They had two cars. They worked so hard. My grandmother lived on coupons. You know, they were hardworking, really, really good ethics. You know, they were strong, good American people, right? They were hustling, four daughters. They, they really, really put in work. And, uh, and they had very low expectations on the world, right? Today, we have, we have a different type of society where there's high expectations 
and extreme spending, right? People living way outside their means. All this is getting slowly exposed and get, it's gonna get pulled back in a very big way. I believe this coupled with the stock market pullback that we're going to see, we haven't seen anything yet. Stock market pullback, the crypto, uh, real estate, all this is gonna pull back. And what are the, you know, the wealthy people gonna do? They're gonna sit on the sidelines with all their money and as the stress really hits the market, they're gonna run out there and invest, invest heavily. That's why I believe that we're gonna see some massive problems coming and house flippers are gonna get really, really exposed with all of this debt. All of this debt. Things are gonna get horrible for home flippers, but there's gonna be massive opportunity. The opportunity is understanding the traps in which all people are about to fall into. Let's say all about you know, 90, 95% of people, they don't know what's actually happening. And so since they don't know what's happening, this affords us the opportunity to understand where the world's going, where the economy's going, and prepare yourself with great credit, strong financials, money in the bank, sources of income, and options. You have all those, when problems hit the market, you're gonna be able to run out there and pounce on opportunity. Don't follow the masses. Think for yourself, be an individual thinker, be an individualist. And what this is ultimately gonna do is provide you immense opportunity when everyone else slowly wakes up to what's actually happening in this environment. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share this content to educate more people on what's really going on. Subscribe here, also subscribe on my second YouTube channel. It's gonna be a podcast and interactive show this upcoming week. Also LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, everything's in the banner. I'll catch you guys later.